The story of the Sixth Gurkhas is one of bravery, loyal service to the crown, and action in many theatres of war, from the jungles of Assam to the northwest frontier, and from Italy to Burma, and from Gallipoli to Borneo. For 200 years, the officers and men of the regiment and its successors have undertaken feats of great courage and played their part in many victories, both small and great. It's a distinguished record, celebrated in 2017, the bicentennial year of the raising of the regiment as the Katak Legion. The origin of the regiment are traced to the war fought between Britain and Nepal from 1814 to 1816. The fighting qualities and the courage of both sides were recognized. A peace treaty was signed and Gorkas began to serve in the army of the British East India Company. Soon afterwards, on the 16th of May, 1817, the Katak Legion was raised in Orissa State, 200 miles south of Calcutta. Its duty was to keep order in the area, and at first it had little to do with Nepal, but the Katak Legion was the parent of the 6th Gorkha Rifles, which emerged after many name changes during the 19th century. War with Burma in the 1820s took the regiment to the northeast of India, beginning a link with the Assam region that was to last for nearly 80 years, years during which there was frequent fighting with local tribes. In 1896, the regiment moved from the lush northeast of India to the dry northwest, to Abbottabad in today's Pakistan. And that was to be another long association, becoming the regiment's home until the 1940s. It was in 1903 that the regiment received the title 6th Gorkha Rifles. A 2nd Battalion was raised and the hat felt Gorkha was introduced, but there was little action before the outbreak of the First World War. The 1st Battalion sailed from Karachi to Suez as part of 29 Indian Infantry Brigade and in 1915 took part in the campaign to capture the Gallipoli Peninsula in Turkey. Six days after the initial invasion, the battalion landed at Cape Helles. It fought its way inland and captured a prominent coastal feature that was named Gurkha Bluff to commemorate the action. That was followed by one of the regiment's greatest battles. The return to action was at Sari Bear, a ridge dominating the whole of the Gallipoli Peninsula. The assault, recreated in Terence Cuneo's painting, was initially led with great bravery by Major Cecil Allenson. Bitter fighting saw the battalion take the crest of the ridge and hold it for three nights and two and a half days in the face of massive Turkish counterattacks. All the British officers, except for the medical officer, Captain Phipson, were killed or wounded and so the battalion was commanded by the Subedar Major, Gamba Singh Poon, assisted by the medical officer. No reinforcements could reach the position. The battalion was withdrawn, and not long afterwards the whole Gallipoli expedition was abandoned. Numerous decorations were awarded, but the campaign had cost the battalion 179 men killed and 668 wounded. In contrast, the 2nd Battalion spent the early part of the war on the northwest frontier, before moving to various tasks and engagements in present-day Iraq. A 3rd Battalion was raised in 1917, but saw little action beyond defensive duties in the 3rd Afghan War, and it was disbanded in 1923. Between the wars, the regiment, along with other Gakka battalions, undertook garrison duties and went regularly into action on the northwest frontier, notably in Waziristan, where there was heavy fighting with the local Patans. At a parade at Abbottabad in 1927, the colonel of the regiment, Lord Birdwood, commander of the Anzacs at Gallipoli, presented new replica regimental colours when the originals became too fragile 
for ceremonial use. The outbreak of the Second World War had no immediate effect on the poorly equipped Fass Battalion, which had no vehicles, radios or mortars, and just a handful of machine guns. But as the war intensified, the battalion joined 19 Indian Division and trained hard for the defence of India, and then for jungle operations, which began in 1944 with the advance into Burma. In early 1945, the 1st Battalion crossed the Great Irrawaddy and fought to secure the bridgehead before playing a major part in the campaign to capture Mandalay. Kingpin of the Japanese hold on Burma was Mandalay, the old capital of the country. Resistance was determined and made the capture of Mandalay the costliest campaign of the whole Burma War. The second British division and the famous Indian 19th Dagger Division were first into Mandalay. Among the regiments which took the city are the Berkshires, the Worcesters, British and Indian tank units, and Gurkha and Punjabi infantry, regiments with magnificent fighting histories. The battalion moved on south in the liberation of Burma before the Japanese surrender in August 1945. The regiment's third battalion was formed in 1940 and in 1943 became part of the second Chindit campaign. The battalion landed by glider behind enemy lines before moving to the location named White City, where there was intense fighting. The columns then marched 160 miles to attack and secure Mogaung with much heroism. The Japs pulled out, Mogaung had fallen. They were outmaneuvered just when they thought they were safe. This is the price of their mistake. Chindits, that's the name for the guardian statues that flank the steps of Burmese pagodas. A name from legend that's become flesh and blood, living guardians of Burma's safety. A fourth battalion was also formed and trained for jungle warfare before playing its part in the advance through Burma, defending the Irrawaddy bridgehead and mopping up pockets of Japanese resistance. The second battalion had a quiet start to the war. It moved to Iraq in 1941 before shipping to Italy in 1944 as part of 43rd Gurkha Lorried Infantry Brigade for the long advance up through Italy. The German positions were well prepared. There were many rivers to cross and there was fierce fighting in the capture of Corriano Ridge, Monte Cadruso, Monte Chico and Medicina depicted in another famous Cuneo painting, before the end of the war in Europe. During the campaign, the friendship between the battalion and the 14th 20th King's Hussars was cemented, leading later to a formal affiliation. Elsewhere, links with the Rifle Brigade, later the Royal Green Jackets, in Malaya, led to another affiliation. And these are connections in which the 6th Gurkhas have always taken great pride. Throughout its history, officers and men from the regiment and its predecessors have shown great courage and served with distinction. The 6th Gurkhas have produced many distinguished officers and men. Outstanding bravery was shown by Captain Almond and the then rifleman Tulbahara Pun in the attack on Magong in the Burma campaign. Both won Victoria Crosses although Captain Almond died of wounds sustained in the fighting. His Victoria Cross was presented to the regiment in Hong Kong in 1991. It is with very great pleasure that I present on behalf of my brother and myself this Victoria Cross awarded to our brother Michael Ormond after the Battle of Mogong. And I would particularly like to associate with his name those of Tul Bahadur Pun DC, Brigadier Michael Calvert, and Major Kum Bahadur Baratoki, who showed similar valour and courage in that great battle.
Former commanding officer Brigadier John Anderson believes that bravery awards are also shared by other comrades. Our Victoria Cross holders were unique and they were incredible. They did extraordinary things. It's very important for the regiment because it's not just a recognition of that individual, it's a recognition of the battalion because no man ever commits an act of bravery by himself. Ultimately, he is supported by others and ultimately he is doing it for others. The most famous Sixth Gacker must be Field Marshal the Viscount Slim. Bill Slim, who led the 14th Army from defeat into victory in Burma in the Second World War. He had joined the regiment after the First World War, having seen it in action at Gallipoli, where Subadar Major Gamba Singh Pun had shown such outstanding leadership and courage. Elsewhere, Subadar Major Persadaman Rai excelled on the northwest frontier. Palman Gurung was a great leader in Burma and served as Subadar Major to seven different commanding officers. In Malaya, Major GCO Harkasing Rai came to the 1st Battalion from the 10th Gorkha Rifles, already bearing a military cross, and his exploits against the communist terrorists earned him a bar to his MC. It followed in the long tradition of many others, like Subadar Major Runbada, Naik Judbeer Gurung and Rifleman Tulbeer Gurung in actions across the 19th century. The regiment also excelled in sport, particularly in the heyday of cud racing, and at football, basketball and shooting. Brigadier John Anderson. If you look at things like sporting successes, shooting, cud races, etc., they're in some ways a mark of excellence. And the fact that this regiment, six Queen Elizabeth's own Gurkha rifles, has consistently been in the top group of competitions such as the Cud Race, Nepal Cup football, Bisley, you only have to look at the results, to realise this isn't just one or two people that are making their mark. This is the regiment's representatives making their mark. It's the regiment being represented, it's the regiment doing well, and therefore it reflects on every soldier. What? And so, what? In modern times, Sixth Gorkha Rifles won the major unit championship three times at Bisley, and men from the regiment won the Queen's Medal for the best army shot no fewer than eight times. Major Kushiman Gurung, a Queen's medalist, recalls a victorious return to the regiment by the shooting team. When, when we won that, I mean, uh, the, um, the Queen's Medal, I mean, uh, the regiment was very, very excited and they, they were very proud. And um, because the uh, competition were held in, in the UK, uh, and uh, when, when we, at, at that time, uh, the battalion were in the Brunei, and then uh, when we went back to unit, um, and there were, I mean, the whole regiment were um, lined up in the guard room uh, to, re uh, to receive us. Um, and uh, we are very honored. All regiments in the British Army have their own history and particular character. So what is it that makes Sixth Gurkha special? What's its essence? Brigadier Anderson and Major Cushman. Some of the regiments are very good operationally and their reputation rests on their operational success. Other regiments are sometimes terribly smooth. Other regiments are good, solid line in regiments, line infantry regiments. But for my money, Sixth Queen Elizabeth's own Gurkha Rifles is good because it is consistent. We do not go up and down in reputation like other regiments. But the one thing I would say about 6GR, it's a happy battalion, and that makes it more unique than some of the other regiments. The relationship between the officers and the soldiers, I would say, because there, there is no gap. If they always, I mean, the soldiers and officers, I mean, they're always like an intimate um, friends. They always mingles together, wherever, I mean, in a jungle or in a, in a private function or wherever. It's always very close together. That is the best, I mean, uh, I, uh, I can describe, I mean, uh, in, in the regiment. 1947 saw the bulk of the Gurkha regiments transferring to the army of independent India. Four regiments, 
each of two battalions, came to the British Army, amongst them 6th Gawker Rifles. The focus for both battalions shifted to Malaya and the threat of communist terrorists. The 1st Battalion undertook continuous operations for nine years, earning a fearsome reputation as jungle fighters. Both battalions then saw action in Borneo and a long association with Hong Kong began. Internal security, border tours and garrison duties in Hong Kong are the common experience of all who served with the 6th Gurkhas since the 1960s. Times of tension, such as the incident of Chinese violence at Man Kam To, were interspersed with long periods of routine and training. Overseas exercises and visits added interest and postings to Brunei came and went. But in the 1990s, a dramatic reduction in the size of the Brigade of Gokas was announced with the threat of redundancy. The formation of the Royal Gorkha Rifles from the four existing infantry regiments came in 1994. Most of the 6th Gorkha men were absorbed into the 1st Battalion, which contained soldiers from the west of Nepal. It was an emotional time for those of long service, like Major Kushim and Gurung. One of my saddest moments uh, in, in my career was uh, uh, the time when uh, the regiment amalgamated with, uh, uh, with Second Gurkhas in 1994. I was very sad then, because the, the um, six year became one hour's year then. So I was very sad because uh, we lose our uh, regiment name then. Uh, but still, I mean, the, the, um, the cap badge was, I mean, uh, just like a six Gurkhas cap badge without six. Which, which, I, I mean, uh, which I was very proud uh, to I mean, wear that cap badge uh, on my uh, barry. The proudest boast of the 6th Gawker Rifles is the unique honour of bearing the name of our present reigning monarch, Brigadier Anderson. The Queen's relationship with 6th Queen Elizabeth's own Gurkha Rifles is in the name of the regiment. Um, we became Queen Elizabeth's own in 1959, and it was a massive honour. For the soldiers, it's important because they can turn around and say, we are Queen Elizabeth's own. And you only have to talk to the soldiers who've actually spoken to the Queen or stood near her to realise how absolutely chuffed they are. It's very important to them. Her Majesty visited Hong Kong in 1975 and the battalion had the privilege of mounting the Guard of Honour for her arrival. She also visited Church Crookham twice when it was home to the regiment for UK tours in the late 70s and the late 80s. On both occasions, the weather was as poor as the visits were successful. The last royal visit, to mark the celebration of the 175th anniversary of the raising of the regiment, took place at the Tower of London in 1992. Over the years, the regiment has also been visited by other members of the royal family. King George V was an early caller, inspecting the regiment in India in 1905 when he was Prince of Wales. More recently, Prince Charles, members of the Nepali royal family, and the Sultan of Brunei have visited. Always on hand on these occasions, and at the heart of the regiment were the pipes and drums, providing stirring music for parades, ceremonies, visits and dinners. At Buckingham Palace in 1962, royal pipe banners were presented to the regiment. The ceremony came during one of the regiment's three tours in the United Kingdom. In the early 1960s, a British Army manpower shortage saw the 1st Battalion shipped to Tidworth for two years to release a British battalion to shore up numbers on the Rhine. The two battalions were amalgamated in 1970 and the single battalion regiment returned to the UK, this time to Church Crookham in 1977. It undertook public duties, and firefighting, 
and went to Belize to defend the newly independent state from Guatemalan threats. That country was revisited during the late 80s, when 6th Gorka Rifles were part of 5 Airborne Brigade. A number of officers and soldiers passed parachute selection and training and were proud to wear the coveted red berry while serving in that brigade. Regiments evolve, names change, but the history and the spirit of the 6th Gorka Rifles lives on in the Royal Gorka Rifles, a vital part of the modern British Army. Its two battalions have served with distinction, most recently in Afghanistan. Many men and officers originally from the 6th Gorkas have fought with valour and distinction in this long and violent operation, marking continuity with the best traditions of the long history of the 6th Gorka Rifles. I don't think there's any question that the reputation of 6GR, the ethos of 6GR, still exists today. We have gone through 200 years now of various titles. We've changed our name dozens of times. We only became Queen Elizabeth's own in 1959. And in 1994, we became Royal Gurkha Rifles. We didn't cease to exist. We carried on. After the amalgamation, right, the uh, six Gurkhas memory and history was still lives on. And uh, we always, I mean, if we had a chance to, I mean, um, social gathering or things like that, but we're always talking about our regiment. Um, and we always had a very memorable, memorable times in, with, the, with the Six Gurkha. So uh, we never forgot uh, the regiment. You talk to a young soldier from Royal Gurkha Rifles, he will say, with tremendous pride, my father was in Six Gurkhas. And that's a lovely touch. <laughs>